Hey everybody, I'm Scott Allen Miller. Today on Sam IT, we're going to talk about VMware's ESXi hypervisor and when we should be looking at it in the SMB market. So this comes up an awful lot. There are four enterprise hypervisors across the board. There's more being worked on in research areas. There's some that are good for other things that are not enterprise production use. But the four that exist for the for all markets, SMB or enterprise, include KVM, Zen, Hyper-V, and VMware's own ESXi. Now, of these, three of them are completely free. They don't come with any licensing encumbrances. That would be Hyper-V, Zend, and KVM. VMware's ESXi is unique in that you have to license it. Now, they do have a free license, but you do have to acquire it. And then you can pay for different levels. And in the SMB market, we have two levels that reasonably exist. One is VMware Essentials, the other is Essentials Plus. These come in at about $600 and about $5,000. Those are big round numbers. Check with your own distribution channel to see what your pricing would be. You then have to maintain those by paying an annual fee, but it's much lower than the upfront acquisition cost. What's important here is understanding at a high level what you get with those levels. The free level, you get an incredibly crippled product that one could argue has no valid use case. It is so crippled that having chosen it simply doesn't make sense. And this is important because we have to, because of this crippling, to be effective, we must look at VMware's ESXi as not having a free option. It's only a technicality that you can acquire the hypervisor for free, but compared to all of its competition, which come with loads of special features and lots of freedom to use it however we want, ESXi does not when it's free. It doesn't even come up with the backup API, which makes ESXi so special to SMB shops. So the free version is really only a technicality. You can effectively ignore it unless you really want to use it in a lab. But if you're using ESXi in a lab, you can normally get a free or low cost lab license where you get all the bells and whistles. So if you're doing it for educational purposes, the free version still effectively doesn't exist. It doesn't matter. Now, if you're looking at Essentials or Essentials Plus, these are limited to three nodes, but that's enough for almost any SMB. If you get beyond three nodes, you move to standard licensing. Things get a little bit more expensive, but you also get a lot more flexibility, so that's fine. When looking at Essentials, this one's cheap. It's only about $600, and people will often say, who has to worry about $600? If you have to worry about $600, then your IT department has too tight of a budget and you're not a viable business. Okay, but it doesn't matter. In the SMB, $600 is not something we throw away unless there's a really good reason for spending it. And what is that good reason with VMware's ESXi? <clears throat> Honestly, I don't know. At $600, you're limited to three nodes. That's not a big deal, but it's a limitation you don't have to accept. You do get the backup API, but you don't get very many of the bells and whistles. And more importantly, you don't get support. This is a supportless level. Now, having purchased ESXi, at the essentials level. You are allowed to pay for per incident support uh, from VMware, and they do have very good support, but this makes no sense. You're still paying for every bit of support, even though you've already paid for the product. Why would you pay for a product just so you have to then pay to get support? All for a product that's crippled dramatically compared to all of its free competition for which if you wanted support, you could also pay for support. You're always able to pay for support with all the other products. You don't have to pay for them up front in order to get access to that support that you still have to pay for. Now, Essentials Plus changes the game. Essentials Plus, even though it's $5,000, comes with a lot of bells and whistles, and at this level, ESXi does some special things. It gets some really good technology that doesn't make it completely unique within the field, but does move it into a very viable competitive category where it's offering some things you may not get from its competitors, and most importantly, at this price range, support is not available, but included. So when we're looking at VMware ESXi, it's pretty important, at least at the current structures, to simply ignore their free and their essentials options. These are nonsensical to a viable business. You would either not accept the crippling of the free version, and you would not accept paying $600 to effectively get nothing with the essentials version, but Essentials Plus comes with enough that you get vMotion and high availability and the included support, still limited to three nodes, that it is extremely worth considering 
if $5,000 of support is something that you need for your virtualization environment. So this is the easy decision factor for SMBs. Would you pay $5,000 or roughly for your hypervisor plus a certain amount every year to maintain that support level? Is it worth it for that support? If that support is not worth $5,000 from that vendor, you should rule out VMware's ESXi immediately. It should not even come up on your short list because that is the one decision factor that would drive you to use it other than ones we can't look at from an IT perspective, which include things like you're running applications and they make you uh, choose VMware regardless of whether it meets your technical needs purely a uh, support or whatever uh, requirement. However, as I often say with other things, any vendor that makes you do that, you need to reconsider as being your vendor because it means they're not respecting you and not respecting their product because there's no reason for them to need you to choose a specific platform in order for them to run. That's not how software works and it is the equivalent to saying that they will support their software on a Dell but not on a Hewlett Packard. Obviously that's insane. Same thing goes for your hypervisor. Now, the competition for EXI is pretty good these days. Zen, KVM, and Hyper-V are all very mature and are all very completely free. Very completely free. You get all of their features, including things that are the equivalent of their vMotions and their high availability and a lot of times extra storage things that don't even come with Essentials Plus and the availability to get support when you need it, all for free. That's a pretty compelling argument because when they're free, you get to do things like update anytime you want. You don't have to worry about not being able to pay and having your product turned off or unlicensed. You can use it wherever it makes sense, even on machines where it's a one-off and you normally wouldn't pay anything to have virtualization there, but you still want to have something and you don't want to have a mixed environment, which is what you would be forced to do if you wanted to use VMware in your main stuff and not in others, and you can use them in the lab, and your lab can be identical to production, and we can go on and on and on about all the flexibility and safety that having free products gives you versus expensive licensing ones, expensively licensed ones, uh, just for your environment. There's a lot of protection in things being free. So, in general, the shortlist for the SMB starts with Hyper-V and KVM. Zen is a back runner at this point, but still a valid choice. And VMware, while technically competent, incredibly competent, because of their pricing and structures and limitations, it simply doesn't come up on the shortlist. And as a Fourth option, it is very, very, very far back, and it is only that one piece of whether or not you are willing to pay a very high price for VMware's specific support that would drive you to consider it at all. So it does have a place, and it's a great technology, and they're a great company with a lot to offer. But in the SMB market, realistically, they're not a consideration. They simply don't make sense to a normal business because businesses can get better support in more cost-effective ways with more safety and flexibility with all of their competition. Generally, we only put three items on a normal short list. That puts VMware in a tough situation of being the fourth option and dramatically far behind the other three. KVM and Hyper-V are pretty much your front runners and are basically neck and neck. They are slightly different from each other. KVM is easier to use. Hyper-V has the advantage of coming from a vendor that people tend to know better. Uh, Zen is at this point a bit behind them but still easy to use, easy to acquire, uh, and well-known. And of course, it's the oldest of all the hypervisors, so it has a lot of maturity behind it. ESXi, no matter how good it is, can't overcome the licensing encumbrances and the cost factors that simply make it difficult to use, expensive to approve, and unnecessarily encumbered. It just doesn't work for a normal SMB. So when you're looking at it, remember, even though lots of people use it, they often do so for historic reasons. That's what they were always using because there was a time period where these factors were different. So a lot of shops already have it and keep it because of that. They've already paid for it. They may see it as a sunk cost, which is still a good reason to consider moving because it costs you nothing to leave it. And a lot of shops are simply told that they need to have VMware because they ask salespeople instead of engineers. And of course, salespeople make money selling VMware and don't make money selling any of its competitors. So every salesperson is going to push VMware on you and you're gonna find that the vast majority of deployments are pushed because VMware has access to sales channels, whereas Hyper-V or KVM being free, there's no one out there to make money by pushing it on you. So the IT perspective would promote everything except VMware for these reasons, and the sales channel would do exactly the opposite. As with most things, your salesmen are not your friends, and their, their um, 
needs and their values are completely opposed to yours and you want to be uh, looking at them very warily. Why would they want to sell you VMware when they there's all these free products uh, that do not only uh, uh, as good a job, but in most cases a much better job because of all the things that you don't have to additionally license that you would never be able to afford or, or just won't get approved for VMware. And why would you pay for them if you're getting them free with their alternatives? Again, VMware has some really cool technology that probably doesn't apply to the SMB market. So it doesn't, it, it, even though they make some of the best stuff out there, it's simply things that the SMB can't leverage, whether they can't afford it or they just don't need it because they don't have the scale or the specific technical needs. It doesn't matter. It simply doesn't apply. So I hope this is useful. Uh, put your comments below. Remember to like and subscribe. You can sponsor us on Patreon. I'm interested to hear uh, your experiences with VMware versus other products. Uh, where are you seeing the value to overcome the cost of VMware? If you are using it in your environment, what makes it worth it to you specifically versus what else is out there? Thanks for joining me.